So the Wolfpack will kick off. Kyle Bambard kicks it away. Darion Kendrick back deep with Adam Choice. And it's Kendrick. Stays on his feet. Has running room along the near sideline. And a nifty return by Kendrick. Down on the field, here's Holly Rowe. Well, during the bye week, Clemson decided to work on their success on opening drives, something they haven't done well all season. In fact, Trevor Lawrence, in his first career start on the opening drive, fumbled on the second play after he looked at the wrong signal caller. They also wanted to get running back Travis Etienne more comfortable because he actually admitted to the coaches he gets super nervous on the opening drive. So hopefully their script is much better for this series. But guys, I feel like with a big kickoff return like that, the opening drive should end in some success now. 41-yard return by Kendrick. Here's the true freshman Lawrence, one of the top high school players in the year. country last year out of Cartersville, Georgia, trying to air it out deep. And that's part of their game plan today. They think they can hit some deep throws against this Wolfpack defense. The intended receiver was Hunter Renfro. North Carolina State, a lot of man-to-man -man coverage, quarters coverage where they don't have a middle field safety, and they invite you to take those shots down the field. Clemson lines up quickly. Great size for Lawrence, 6'6", 215 pounds. He can run. They haven't had many design quarterback runs, but when they do it, he can do it, and he got 12 in the first down. Well, this is a great zone read. I mean, they're not expecting him to run. This is not Kelly Bryant's offense. It's a different Clemson offense, but you have to run enough on plays like that to keep the defense honest, and that was a nice decision by Trevor Lawrence. ETN, the running back. He goes out in motion. NC State still crowding the line of scrimmage. Quick throw by Lawrence and the catch by T. Higgins and a good tackle by Nick McLeod near the near sideline. A short game. They'll mark it at the 40, a gain of five. Very talented wide receiver group that Clemson has, and they're very diverse. They've got a, a couple different styles of receiver. You know, they have just about everything you would want, as you said at the top of the telecast on all sides of the ball. ETN wrestled down by Jermaine Pratt, the leading tackler, linebacker for NC State. Yeah, great story. Came to North Carolina State as a safety. Played two years as a safety. Gained some weight. Hurt his shoulder in 2016 and sat out the year. And this is his first year as a starter. And all he's doing is leading the ACC in tackles per game. Also the vocal leader of that unit, although he had his game face on, we visited with him last <laughs> night. He was ready to go. The time for small talk was over as far as Jermaine was concerned. Third down and three. Lawrence, plenty of time. Open receiver, first down. Out of bounds, 28-yard line. T. Higgins again. This is a bail technique. Good protection. It's only a four-man rush. Trevor Lawrence reads the coverage bail technique by the corner Ingram and that was an easy pitch and catch for the first down. And you see right away just the arm strength and talent of Trevor Lawrence. His third start you can see the comfort level increasing with each passing week. He's on target to Renfro tackled immediately Renfro. by the true freshman safety Tanner Ingle. One of the things that Trevor Lawrence has brought to this offense he's improved their perimeter screen game like a play like that because he gets rid of the ball so quickly he gets that shotgun snap and the ball is out immediately and it's very accurate as well. 68 percent plus in his true freshman season very accurate. Well protected again by a veteran offensive line Renfro maneuvers inside the 10. Isaiah Moore made the tackle after Tanner Engel whiffed. It's a 16-yard game. Your slot receiver is going to be on a safety. This is Engel, the freshman. No chance against Renfro. Beautiful route by Renfro. He got separation, and Lawrence put the, the ball right on the numbers for him. Well, as Holly Rose said, the Clemson coaches wanted faster starts. They spent a lot of time on that during the bye week, and this is a very impressive opening drive. ETN. And one man to beat, and he was in, down inside the three-yard line. Jarius Moorhead, the safety, prevented a touchdown. North Carolina State defense that has only allowed eight touchdowns. And right now, they've got their backs against the wall on the opening possession. Second and goal from the three. ETN's been a touchdown score, three 
touchdown runs in each of the last two games, and he has won less than four minutes in today. Jermaine Pratt, the leading tackler, is going to get fooled. Here he is right here. He's going to see the motion coming across with Rodgers, and he's just going to have his eyes on the wrong thing. And by the time he sees it's ETN with the football, it's too late. And number nine's in the end zone. Here's Greg Hugel, fifth-year senior kicker. Out of the hold of Will Sweeney, the son of the head coach, Dabo Sweeney. Travis Etienne emerging as a Heisman Trophy candidate in this, his sophomore season. If he could score two more touchdowns on the ground today, he'd be the back at Clemson. Important ACC game. These two teams, the only undefeated in conference play on the Atlantic side, Virginia Tech 3-0 on the coastal side leading that division of the ACC big game Friday night in Boston between BC and Miami both with conference title hopes one game underway in the ACC an early start Virginia about two minutes away it seems from beating Duke they lead 28 to 14. E.T. Potter, great weapon, almost all touchbacks off his foot this year. Here's Adnan, and Adnan, thank you. Here comes Ryan Finley leading the NC State Wolfpack offense. Sixth year college football senior out of Phoenix, Arizona, Paradise Valley High School. Started his career at Boise State. Now in his third year as a record-setting starter in Raleigh, North Carolina. And his first pass, dangerous to the far sideline, A.J. Terrell. Close quickly on Kelvin Harmon. You know, Terrell and Mullen are two outstanding, promising corners. Very quick on his break to the football. That, you're right, it's a long throw. Left hash to the right sideline. And, and Terrell was there to make the play. They go out of the pistol. Reggie Gillespie, the running back. The running game's been better in recent weeks for NC State, but still as a team under four per carry. Tanner Mews on a safety blitz. And Finley took cover back at the 16-yard line. Brent Venables, the defensive coordinator, said they run a lot of bootlegs. This is how you defend a bootleg. You bring an unblocked guy off the edge. Ryan Finley, by the time he gets his head around, he has nowhere to go. Christian Wilkins also pressuring from the inside. Two great plays in a row by this Clemson defense. One of the best in the country. That's a loss of nine. Clemson giving up just 14 and a half points per game. That's sixth best in the country. But NC State, the best third down team by far, but they haven't put up that 61% by putting themselves into third down and 19. Gillespie got some yardage back, but on fourth and 11, they'll punt. When we were here a couple weeks ago, Sean, the first half, this Clemson defense had their hands full with Syracuse. They had the injury to their quarterback. In the second half, they locked down, and they have played at a very high level since that point. A.J. Cole, four-year starting punter, kicking into a pretty good breeze that buffets the ball before it landed in the hands of Amari Rogers. And better coverage this time by the NC State Special teams led by Tyler Griffiths. 7-0 Clemson. We started this college football Saturday with eight remaining undefeated teams in FBS football. As you saw and heard from Adnan a moment ago, Cincinnati suffered its first loss at Temple. So Luke Fickle's team now 6-1. and one. Yeah, there were three teams from the American Athletic Conference that were part of that eight undefeated. Those two teams at the bottom, UCF, USF, both still undefeated. They'll play each other at the end of the year. Well, Dabo Sweeney has a vote in the coaches' poll. He asked him yesterday, and he said he does put a lot of time and effort into it. He had Alabama number one, and then his Clemson team number two, Ohio State, and then Notre Dame. Just about every number you'll see about Coach Sweeney is impressive, including that one, 14 and 2 in their last 16 against top 25 teams. And they start this possession with a run from Travis Etienne across the 39-yard line, a gain of three. One of the things that Dabo told us yesterday that he really likes, he loves the psyche of his team and just where his team is mentally and emotionally at this point in the season. 
Three Talk yards. about that a little bit more in the next play, and I, I agree with them where his team is at. Well, they've been challenged. Both on and off the field. Lawrence, deep throw, and an incomplete pass intended for Darion Kendrick. A lot of adversity. They had the yeah. quarterback change. It was really the thing that got the most attention around the country. Kelly Bryant replaced by Lawrence after four games as a starter, and then Bryant decided to leave the program. Yeah, and then Lawrence got hurt in his first start, and they had to scramble to find a way to win a game with their third-team quarterback, Chase Bryce, which they were able to do. Very emotional win. They also went on the road in a hostile environment early at A&M and got tested. So they, they've got some things under their belt that some other teams maybe don't have. Yeah, Alabama ahead of them has not been tested. The talent level is amazing. They've been hammering everybody. Beautiful throw. And speaking of talent, Justin Ross not only looks the part, he plays the part. True freshman wide receiver and the next great one here at Clemson. A first down at a gain of 13. Yeah, out of Phoenix City, Alabama. He was the player of the year in Alabama and one of the only guys like that that did not choose to go to Alabama or Auburn. Chose to come to Clemson, make his own way, and uh, as soon as he arrived, I mean, he is a polished receiver that is uh, fit right in with this group. 6'4", 210, didn't want to play football as a high school athlete, preferred basketball. Deep throw. They are definitely doing what they told us they were going to do. Take some deep shots. That one for T. Higgins. Holly? Well, you were talking about the leadership on this Clemson team. Consider this. The week that Kelly Bryant left and Trevor Lawrence was going to become the starter, Christian Wilkins, the defensive tackle, actually asked him to go out to breakfast. They just went by themselves, and Dabo said, I wouldn't have known about it except for someone on campus saw them and texted me and said, this is the kind of leadership you have on campus. Christian Wilkins, the leader of this team, letting the young man know things would be okay, and they were behind him. Well, Dabo talks about the leadership within the playing ranks. Lawrence fires a strike for DeAndre Overton. And it's an incomplete pass. And third down and 10 from just inside the NC State 45 yard line. Typically in third down, the, the guy you have to pay attention to is Hunter Renfro right here in the slot. He is a very active guy on third down. Timeout NC State. Timeout. They were lining up for this important third State. down and 10. First timeout. Ship trophy presented by Dr. Pepper. Both of these teams looking to stay undefeated today. Hope to earn a spot in the college football playoff. Four team playoff at the end of the year. Of course, Clemson won it all in 2016. Also back in 1981 under Danny Ford. They're facing third down and 10. They march right down the field on their opening possession. This is drive number two. North Carolina State showed blitz, then came out of it. And ETN couldn't catch the screen. Now that, that was a nice job by the North Carolina State defense. They showed pressure. They forced Trevor Lawrence to change the protection and change the play. And then they dropped out of there and still defended the screen. So just really nice job by the North Carolina State defense. Dave Huxtable, the defensive coordinator, had it dialed up right that time. Well defended by Deontay Holden. So Bill Spires, well, Will Spires, Bill Spires' son will come on to punt. Will's dad, Bill, the punter and All-American baseball player here at Clemson. Played 13 years in the major leagues, including time with the Milwaukee Brewers. Fair Thomas, the fair catch, Adnan Burke. And Sean, huge game for the Brewers tonight. Right now, though, Dr. Pepper championship drive update. Bama and Tennessee to a tongue of Iola, Jerry Hay Judy. Eight games, eight touchdowns, the opening drive for Alabama as they're rolling right out of the gate. And then Josh Jacobs, three-yard run. Bama's now outscoring opponents by 120 points in the first quarter of the season. 14 to nothing, Sean. Back to you. Not even five minutes in to that one, although not a big surprise. They were a 30-point favorite today. I think I read a stat last week. They had scored more points in the first quarter than about 25 FBS teams have scored in the entire in the, game. In the whole season. In the whole season. The whole season. Yes. More points in the first quarter. NC State from its own 12. Reggie Gillespie. Ahead for a yard, Christian Wilkins, part of that tremendous front four, all of whom Todd McShay projects as top two round draft choices, three of them including Wilkins. 
he has projected the top 11 picks of the next NFL draft. Now, Wilkins is just he's so instinctive and athletic. He has tremendous flexibility and he makes plays that are just kind of freakish because of his physical traits. Movement. Cleland Farrell came across the line of scrimmage and there is a flag. Offside, defense number 99. Five yard penalty. Second down. Jeff Flanagan, our referee. Cleveland Farrell, Farrell is clearly offsides, and when he touched the offensive tackle, I think that's why he wasn't able to get back, and they had to call the penalty of offsides. But he obviously thought he saw a flinch, but the referees did not agree. It's an interesting matchup up front because they have all Americans, all four starters in that defensive line, but it's a very, very talented NC State offensive line. Gillespie. Has a first down out to the 25 yard line. Isaiah Simmons made the tackle. Here's how Todd McShay sizes up those great players in the defensive front. Three first round picks, all in the top 11, and then Austin Bryant he sees going in the second round. And Austin Bryant, of the four, is the best pure pass rusher of the group. They all have unique abilities and talents. Dexter Lawrence, the biggest, most massive guy on the inside. First first down of the game for the Wolfpack and Gillespie slides out to the 29 yard line Clemson the first team to bring back four all Americans in the defensive line from one season to the next all four of those guys made at least one all American team last year and, and Holly talked about the leadership I mean just that in and of itself that those four guys decided to come back for another year set them up for what they hope will be a special season. Ryan Finley down to the shotgun now. Stephon Lewis, ordinarily a wide receiver, moves in behind him. A high snap and a quick throw out wide for a four yard gain. Emeka Amezi, part of a deep and talented receiving core for NC State. Dave Doran says, I think we have one of the best receiver groups yeah. in the country. I think he's right. I mean, they're big and physical. I mean, they, they're all over 210 pounds and they are very physical going to the football. Kelvin Harmon, number three, has been one of their leaders, has been pretty quiet so far. Not only have they been great on third downs, but through five games, the best since 2013. That Louisville team, they're not going to convert this time. Ricky Person, the freshman, dropped for a loss. Isaiah Simmons yeah. met him in the backfield. Too many guys that they couldn't block. I and mean, this is a, a play Ryan Finley needs to get out of because Simmons is going to come untouched. There's not enough blockers on that side of the formation to run that play into that look. Third down and short, but you don't have a hat for a hat, and Simmons makes the nice play on third down. There is A.J. Cole again, punting into about a 12-mile-per-hour breeze. It's become a very pleasant day. Bright sunshine now, 70 degrees. We had some light rain this morning. Good kick into the breeze. Amari Rogers belted right on the catch. Excellent coverage by C.J. Riley, and here's Adnan Verk. All right, Sean, thank you. This time an update on what's happening with Michigan and Michigan State in East Lansing. Shea Patterson to Donovan Peoples-Jones. Longest pass play for Michigan since 2013. How about the effort of the receiver to avoid the tackle and stay in balance? 14-7 now. Wolverines on the road, and also Indiana and Penn State. Stevie Scott counting me in the end zone. Seriously, what's up with Penn State? 7-all right now. It's over on ABC. Sean? Well, obviously, Todd Blackledge has not been sending enough money as an alum <laughs> to Penn State. After a 44-yard punt, well covered. Clemson from its own 25-yard line, and Tavian Feaster, the ball carrier, for just a couple. Feaster is, was bothered by a shoulder injury early in the Wake Forest game, did not play much, and so all they did was have three other guys that ran for over 100 yards. A total of 471 yards rushing against the Deacons. That's crazy. 
fourth most in a game in school history and the most rushing yards in a game for Clemson since 1981 also against Wake Forest and they have 536 the national championship winning team T Higgins first down 41 yard line dragged down by Nick McLeod the starting cornerback out of Rock Hill South Carolina beautiful throw by Trevor Lawrence he threw it before his receiver came out of the break right to that back shoulder on the sideline impossible to defend he has clearly settled in now as the starting quarterback at Clemson this is third start he's played in all seven games Travion Thompson tackled by Stephen Griffin whose dad Steve played running back and defensive back for Clemson back in the early and mid 80s young Stephen a transfer from the University of Tennessee expecting big things from him he's been banged up a lot of this year Feaster the running back Lots of time for Lawrence. Steps into another deep throw. Travion Thompson, the intended receiver. Stephen Griffin had the coverage. A couple of flags down. And it's a penalty against Clemson. Back of the line of scrimmage. Yeah, I think they're going to get the left guard, John Simpson, for a hold. Now this North Carolina State defense playing with a whole new defensive front. We talk about the Clemson defensive front. The defensive line last year for NC State was outstanding as well. They had four guys drafted in the NFL, led by Bradley Chubb, who was the fifth guy picked in the draft by the Broncos. But holding, holding. number 74 on the offense. That penalty will be declined. Third down. I think a lot of people expected there to be a huge drop off for this Wolfpack defense because of that. But they have really filled in the gaps pretty nicely and played solid on the defensive side of the football so Tough far. Decision this there for Dave Dorn. Pardon me, Todd. He elected to turn down the penalty and take third down and eight. Five and zero oh this season. I think I pushed him back further. Yeah, I think I would have too. Again, Renfro, the guy to pay attention to on third down. They bring a blitz. They didn't get that close to Lawrence, and he has Renfro for the first down. 35 catches to convert third downs over the last three years for Renfro. Well, this is a mismatch. That's Jermaine Pratt, the middle linebacker at 240 pounds. Even though he used to be a safety, he's not going to guard Hunter Renfro on that kind of a route. And Renfro, Renfro knows exactly where to go on third down. That's his specialty. That's the number we were just referencing. NC State knew they were likely to go to Renfro, still couldn't stop it. Lawrence, another deep strike, and a catch, and a touchdown for T. Higgins. It's play action with max protection. You keep the tight end in and the back, it's a two-man route. And Higgins gets separation from Nick McLeod, the corner, and Trevor Lawrence leads him perfectly away from the defender for the touchdown. They convert on third down, and the next play, they strike for the touchdown. I think Dave Doran might want a do-over on the accepting or declining of that penalty. Greg Hugo adds the extra point. Glum fans who've made the trip down from Raleigh. Trevor Lawrence, the 12th touchdown pass of his true start. Your free trial today by downloading the ESPN app or by visiting ESPNplus.com. This is not likely to be returnable. And just as we say that, it goes through the back of the end zone. Second touchback and as many kickoffs for BT Potter. Here's today's Dell Technologies playbook. Well, we said North Carolina State plays a lot of quarters. That means it's man with no safety. As Rodgers goes in motion, that brings this safety up. Watch when Hunter Renfro crosses the field. That's going to take two defenders. And then that leaves T. Higgins all alone with a lot of field to gain separation. Max protection, seven guys blocking. Trevor Lawrence with the perfect throw. And a nice touchdown for Clemson. Good execution on the play action first down pass. Well, Jeff Scott, the offensive coordinator for Clemson, co-coordinator with Tony Elliott, said we think we can connect on deep throws. And they've come out flinging it long today. Ryan Finley. 
Throwing a deep ball himself, oh. and it's dropped. They desperately needed a big play. Had it in the hands of Kelvin Harmon, and he could not hang on. Kelvin Harmon was thinking end zone. Little double move. They love to run double moves, and he froze the corner. Farrell, Terrell, and he had it. And he just did not secure the catch. You just don't. You can't let too many opportunities like that go by the wayside in a game against a team as good as Clemson is. That should have been a huge play. Instead, it's second and ten. Under three minutes to go in the opening quarter, and they're doing nothing on the ground. Ricky Person dumped by Cleveland Furl for a loss of a couple. This defensive front has the ability to change the line of scrimmage. I mean, they, they get a lot of tackles behind the line of scrimmage. They force running plays that are designed to go inside, to bounce outside. They're very active and very aggressive up in that front. Coordinated by Brent Venables, one of the best in the country. 0 for 2 today. That's 61%. Starting today, far and away leading the country, four percentage points ahead of the next best. We'll give you one guess. Alabama, 57% on third down. But they don't get to third down very often. <laughs> Alabama, well, they usually convert on first or second down. Flag down. Hard snap. Delay a game. Offense. Five yard penalty. Third down. And the point you made earlier is exactly right. North Carolina State has been super efficient on third down because they've been averaging such short yards needed to convert. They've been effective, effective and efficient on first down, on early downs, and they've put themselves in very difficult third down situations in this ball game so far. Well, they came in averaging 6.2 yards on first down yeah. for the season. It's easy to convert on third down when you do that. They have minus one yard rushing today. Third and 17. And another flag far sideline along the line of scrimmage for another false start. False start. Offense number 67. Five yard penalty. Third down. Justin with the right tackle. Holly. Well, guys, Brian Finley told us that their biggest concern today was the crowd noise. And I can tell you it's deafening down here. My decimal meter says me it's 100. Two years ago, in a heartbreaking loss, he said this is the loudest place he's ever played. And a third and 21, Gillespie all the way out within a yard of the first down. Finally taken down by Trey Lamar, the leading tackler for the year for Clemson. And now Coach Doran looks like he's going to go for it. Nope. For a moment he was looking out of the offense and now he'll send out the punt team. Well, this at least the good news from that run is your punter now, A.J. Cole, if he does his job, should be able to flip the field a little bit and give the North Carolina State defense a, a break here. Done a nice job punting in this quarter, given that it is going into that 12-mile-an-hour win. This is another good one. Amari Rogers, the catch of the 19. And a return to the 25-yard line. Here's Adnan Verk. All right, thank you very much, Sean. A great day of college football action. Colorado trying to bounce back after its first loss of the season last week. Here, number three, Clemson leading 14 to nothing. Trevor Lawrence, the handoff to Travis Etienne, and he got two on first down. So the thing about this Clemson running game, and we talked to Dave Huxtable, the defensive coordinator, about it. He says, you know, you can defend the run extremely well, play after play after play, but if you have a play where you just miss a gap or miss a tackle, you got a problem because these guys have the ability, the speed, particularly ETN, to just take those things the distance. And last year in the ball game, they had that happen. Feaster ran 89 yards on a touchdown untouched. They sling it out. Travion Thompson running room on the catch. Stood up and taken across the boundary by Chris Ingram at the 40. It's a first time back to Clemson, South Carolina on a spectacular fall day as we continue Dr. Pepper's championship drive game of the week.
Uh, Blackledge and Holly will only get big games. We had to talk about the championship drive game of the week last week in Oregon. And there's a look at the student section here at Clemson Taco Bell celebrating student sections. Passionate fans all year long awarding the best student section of the year. Clemson already on the national list. Go to ESPN.com slash Taco Bell to see how your school can compete. Well, they got a matchup they like down here. Single coverage on Justin Ross. Come out firing deep on this first and 10. They stick with the ground game. ETN, who has held the 15 yards rushing in the first quarter on five carries, got four yards on that run. Again, you have to be sure to get him on the ground because his speed is such that if you miss an arm tackle and he gets to the second level of your defense, he going. <laughs> Trevor Lawrence, 10 out of 16 for 135. Tosses it to ETN. Who gets swung down for a gain of one. Sophomore from Jennings, Louisiana. He told us it's a small town of about 13,000. He went home during their bye week. Said, are you aware of some Heisman trophy mentions coming your way? He said, my mother, Donetta, was the first one to tell me about it. So we asked him, did she tell you to ignore it or embrace it? She said, oh, no, she was really excited yeah. about it. It's funny, Jeff Scott said, you know, I don't think the kid knows how good he is. He just, you know, he just kind of has a, an easygoing demeanor about him. He's doing historic things. Look out. With a three-man rush, they get to Trevor Lawrence and drop him for a sack. The main pressure came from James Smith Williams, defensive end from Raleigh, North Carolina. Well, we're just talking glowingly about ETN, but this is not what you do. I mean, now this is a mismatch blocking a defensive end. But you can't whip. If that's your assignment, you can't whip. You've got to get a piece of them and give your quarterback a chance. Usually with young, talented running backs, that's the last piece that comes to their game, being a good physical pass protector. There Spires to punt again. First time today he's punting into the wind. Fair Thomas back deep. Fan favorite in Raleigh, former walk-on. Does a little bit of everything for this Wolfpack team, including making a fair catch at the 20-yard line, Holly Rowe. Well, guys, despite having a great quarterback in Ryan Finley and outstanding wide receivers, the thing NC State has not been able to do is get their ground game going. They're averaging under four yards per carry as a group. And Reggie Gillespie has already had his left ankle retaped. He's got a heavy brace on his right knee. Left ankle has been bothering him here in this game. Person also has a labrum issue. So we've also seen Stephen Lewis at running back. Not going really great on the game, on the ground game for them right now. And our game's been better in recent weeks in their 2-0 start in the ACC. Wins against Virginia and BC. They averaged 200 yards per game of rushing. After they really had a tough time out of the gate. It's Holly said Stephon Lewis ordinarily a wide receiver lined up in the backfield there and a good game he picked up just more than five yards they have not played a tough schedule Todd they struggled to run the ball against James Madison against Georgia State well, there's there's a lot of factors I mean the the health of Ricky person the freshman he was not available early one of their best blockers their tight end Auten Reith was hurt the first couple games. It just took their run game a little bit longer to get going. And now with Glass being not 100% with the ankle, that, that adds to the problem. False start. False start. Offense number 53. Five-yard penalty. Second down. Tyler Jones, their terrific fifth-year senior left tackle, who's played nearly 3,400 snaps in his career. This is his 33rd straight start at left tackle. Another big mistake by the Wolfpack. Clemson has all backup defensive linemen in on this possession. Person with that hip labor problem running well. He has a first down. Knocked out by Trayvon Mullen. See, he's the difference maker. He's the guy who can get to the edge and has the acceleration. In fact, he leads the team, even though he didn't play the first two weeks, in runs of over 10 yards. I mean, he is a more explosive back than Gillespie, and they just need to keep him healthy. His 10th rush of 10-plus yards this season, good for 14. They fired out this way to Jacoby Myers. And he stood up, driven back by Jalen Williams at Pittsburgh after they suffered their first loss of the season here against Clemson. Part of the adversity that Dabo Sweeney talked about 
the Clemson faced. They won in the last minute of that game against Syracuse. He said, that's a win I'll remember throughout my career. The incomplete pass, a little too hot to handle for Jacoby Myers. I don't normally see Ryan Finley miss a throw like that. It was a curl route. He was open. He usually is tremendously accurate on that kind of throw. There was not pressure. Just didn't make the connection, and now they got another third down situation, which they've yet to convert. But this is at least more manageable distance than they've had so far. Operating with the breeze at their backs, the Wolfpack here in the second quarter. Still down by just 14, with just about everything having gone wrong. Blitz from Simmons. Finley got it off, nobody home. Looking for Jacoby Myers. With Kayvon Wallace in coverage, and NC State will punt again. Well, Simmons is so explosive getting to the quarterback. He's long, he's rangy. And Ryan Finley knew he was coming and would have to get rid of the football and threw it probably before he was ready to throw it. Brent Venables decided to go with pressure and zero coverage that time, and it paid off on third down. Thank you. A.J. Cole punting for the fourth time already. Flag down, line drive kick, driving Amari Rogers back inside the 10. Amari Rogers. Son of T. Martin, the former Tennessee quarterback, now an assistant coach at Southern California. Let's check out the flag. It was thrown by the official along the near sideline at the line of scrimmage. Well, I think he might decline this. That was a good return by Rodgers. 18-yard return of a 53-yard punt, so a net gain of 35 yards. It's also yeah. now a... Clemson penalty. You know, we were here three weeks ago. Amari Rogers dropped a punt, and they fumbled it. Syracuse recovered, led to a score, and he was never the same the rest of the ballgame. It really affected him in a negative way, and eventually they just kind of stopped, you know, using him in the game plan, and uh, he recovered, came back strong. He's such a valuable part of this offense, and a diverse player. On the play. Illegal formation offense. Five men in the backfield during the return. Illegal block in the back. Receiving team. Those fouls were offset. We'll replay the down. Sterling Hoffrich with the punter for Syracuse that day. Hit yeah. several moon balls, and Rogers really struggled. Matter of fact, Jeff Scott told us a couple days later we got that jugs gun out and we That's started right. firing those punts up in the air at about as high as you can set the jugs now, machine. Down. To help Rodgers. Punting we've seen this year has been the best I've we ever have seen, seen in college football. We've seen some great punting. We have. And this guy's terrific. Senior out of College Park, Georgia. And one of the great citizens in college football. A.J. Cole on the All-State American Football Coaches Association. Good works team. Five straight years on his spring break. He's gone over to Kenya to work with youngsters. Also on the all academic team in the ACC. And a very solid four year punter for the Wolfpack. And this is a rocket. <laughs> Holy smokes. Too long. And into the end zone. She anticipated home debut at the Staples Center, Los Angeles, for LeBron James. His performance against the Trailblazers Thursday night. The numbers there in their loss in Portland. Here it's 14 to nothing. Clemson looked like a pretty easy throw and catch, but Lawrence not on the mark to Hunter Renfro. Had an open receiver on the bootleg. Had a pretty good blend of run and pass so far for Clemson offensively. Have you gotten over LeBron leaving Cleveland? Uh, it's still going to be weird seeing him in that uniform. I, you know, I just loved watching him. I watched him in high school at St. Vincent St. Mary and. Uh, and then obviously in his two stints with Cleveland, but uh, appreciate everything he's done for Northeastern Ohio. I certainly am happy that he was there. The fake to Adam Choice. Lawrence better throw this time, and we'll see if they give Higgins the first down on that far sideline. Looks like they're going to mark him just short. Swung out by Chris Ingram. Well, they do move the chains. Well, it looked like he did not get to the yellow line. Well, you mentioned it earlier, Sean. The coaches told us they were going to take some shots in this ball game. 
down the field. A lot of that is because of the scheme that North Carolina State plays, and they wanted to threaten that defense. Adam Choice ahead for four more. They've done that. How many yeah. of the passes has he thrown from 20 yards down the field five, so far? Five today, and in the first six games when Trevor Lawrence has been on the field, it was only 14 times. So it was definitely a part of their plan. They only connected on one, but it was for the touchdown. But at least they serve notice to North Carolina State, hey, we are going to attack you down the field if you continue to play this kind of coverage. Marion Kendrick has set the tone for this game with a 41-yard kickoff return to start the game. Jermaine Pratt and Nick McLeod took him down. It's another Clemson first down to the 43. This guy does a little bit of everything. He was a four-year starting quarterback in high school. So look how he sets up blocks, very patient on that end around. Seen him block on the wide receiver screens really well so far today. He also can throw the football out of the Wildcat when they get in the red zone if they ever need that package. He's capable of doing that. Rock Hill, South Carolina, U.S. Army All-American in high school. Lunging catch made by Hunter Renfro for about a five-yard gain, Holly. Well, you guys, they talked about a better plan for Lawrence to go downfield, and they're just gaining more and more trust in him. And one of the reasons he's really stepping up as a leader of this team, when Kelly Bryant was here, Trevor Lawrence was very careful not to usurp him in any way. He wouldn't talk to the guys. He would take a back seat to Kelly Bryant. But now that it's his team, he's speaking up more and using his voice. He slings it out to the near side for another first down. Justin Ross to the 44 of NC State. And he's a very mature guy, has a lot of poise. I think Holly nailed it. He was very respectful of Kelly Bryant and his place on the team, but still fiery competitive, you know, and wanted to play, wanted to be the guy. And once it was handed to him, regardless of what the circumstances were, he, uh, he has not looked back. He took it and ran with it. Turned 19 years old two weeks ago on the day of their game at Wake Forest when they hammered the Demon Deacons 63 to 3. Under duress and swung down for a big loss by Jermaine Pratt. They'll mark him back at the 45 yard line of Clemson. Well, Jermaine Pratt, nice job timing this split and hitting the right gap. This is a play where Trevor Lawrence, once he feels this, probably needs to throw the football away. Not going to get away from a full speed Jermaine Pratt coming right up the middle like that. Big time play by Pratt. For a loss of 11. Under eight minutes to go, first half. Short set by Lawrence and a quick throw and a nice move after the catch. To the 41-yard line goes T. Higgins. There's the Lawrence family, his parents, Trevor's parents. Jeremy and Amanda made the trip from Cartersville, Georgia, not far away down the Atlanta area. Yep. Trevor committed to Clemson in December of his junior year. Highly recruited guy, obviously, enrolled in January of 2018. Broke a lot of Deshaun Watson's records, high school records in the state of Georgia. Still seven yards to pick up. A blitz up the middle. They gave Lawrence time, and he's on target. Kendrick again with a first down. Boy, beautiful job by Adam Choice picking up the blitz that time. Here's the route down the field. It's a deep out route. Beautiful throw to the outside shoulder. When you give him time and he can step into it, I mean, he can zip that football now. Adam Choice did a beautiful job of picking up the linebacker blitz to allow his quarterback to make that throw. Lawrence is almost at 200 yards. Ooh. Passing, he's at 198, and Isaiah Moore absolutely planted Adam Choice. Isaiah Moore is a young guy on this defense, a redshirt freshman. Dave Huxable said he loves the game of football. He's getting better and better. The more he plays, he's growing up. He's understanding the game more. He got quickly to the football that play. Third leading tackler despite missing their win at Marshall. That's their only road game of the season. They played just five games. They had a game taken off the schedule against West Virginia due to Hurricane Florence. Lawrence 
Leaping catch as he inbounds. No. Justin Ross out of bounds as he caught the ball along the sideline at the 12. Yeah, he had two officials both looking at it from opposite angles. It's a beautiful catch. Tried to get one foot down in bounds, but the heel out of bounds. The toes were in bounds. The heel touched out of bounds, and it's a good call. Could be a big stop right here for North Carolina State defense. Third down and 10. And how many teams would Ross come off the field on third down and 10? <laughs> Other teams in the country. Yeah. And they play about eight wide receivers. They roll them in. Well, they got another freshman in that they're really high on right now, and that's Braden Galloway, a freshman tight end from right down the road in Anderson, South Carolina. They see him as a guy that's going to factor more and more into their offense as the rest of the season goes on. As they say, that Clemson team, Lickens County Habitat for Humanity to Build a House for a local family in need. You saw the Tolbert family. Anthony and Sheena and their daughters. It's being constructed on campus. It'll be moved to its permanent location after they finish building. Another great homecoming tradition. That is another tradition on homecoming is winning. Clemson has won its last seven homecoming games. 41-4 and two in the last 47 homecoming games. And leading this one 14 to nothing. Third and ten. Again, here's Rempro. He's the normally the guy that's the first look on third down. Shadows could be an issue for players trying to see the ball as it comes to them. Lawrence looking into the sun. Trevor Lawrence sees some running room. Trevor Lawrence slides down. And where did he slide? Looks like they're going to give him the first down. He needed the 15. They're going to mark it just inside. It was pursued by Jermaine Pratt. Well, the coaches have told us that this guy can run a 4-6. I mean, he is an athletic guy. They don't want him running as much as they had Kelly Bryant running last year, mainly because Kelly's not here behind him. Chase Bryce, their, their depth at quarterback is not what it was when the season started. They're very alert in the replay booth. Running on the field as the quarterback reached the line of game when he started the slide. That play is under review. And Tom DeJoseph, the replay official, Tom Considine, the communicator, they want to take a little more time to look at that. This is a big play. Yeah, got to get to fourth the, down if they mark him short of that 15. To the 15-yard line when he starts the slide. Oh, yeah. Let's bring in Bill Lamagne, our rules expert, long time on the field, Big Ten referee. It looks like he started that slide behind the 15-yard line, Bill. You're absolutely right. The uh, heap starts to break down on the slide at least a yard short of that. So replay is going to put the ball back at the spot he first started to drop for the slide, not where he hit. Jeff Flanagan, long time. Referee Tom DeJoseph in the replay booth, longtime on field official. Bill, why would it not be where he hits the ground? Well, they put the rule in so that the quarterback could get the protection. Right. So as soon as he starts to make that feet first slide, it's dead. It's just like gotcha. he stepped out of bounds. And so they're he trying take to do a that. shot, probably, right, right Bill? Exactly. When he's starting to slide and giving himself up. So we're not going to give him any extra yardage with that. It's dead the moment he starts the slide. I don't know about that yeah, shot that, from that our crew. Be, that might be <laughs> the indicator right there. He was already in the mid slide. He did not replace his divot yeah. on this beautiful grass field. Talked with Tom to Joseph before the game of the replay booth. He said, How did you decide to become a replay official? He said, When I had my knees replaced, it's time to get off the field. <laughs> <laughs> Smart guy. And uh, given the length of this conversation now, I would assume they're just discussing exactly where they should spot the ball. And if they do move it back, Dabo Sweeney will have a decision to make, Todd, on fourth down and probably uh, less than a yard. Yeah. Also, likely have to reset the clock. After review. After review. When the quarterback began the slide, that is where the ball is spotted by rule. 
That occurred at the 16-yard line. So it'll be fourth down and one at the 16-yard line. Please reset the game clock to 5.56. Dabo doesn't like it, but they got it right. Yeah. And there are times you wonder why they stop it, but that's that's a big play. Yeah. And now it's fourth down, and you're forcing a field goal try where they might have continued to march in and right. score a touchdown. Well, and, and Dabo doesn't like it, but you know what? His quarterback took a shot on the sideline when he didn't slide, when he kind of went head first on a play in the Syracuse game and missed the rest of that game. So the rule is in there to protect the quarterbacks. And they got it right. You're exactly right. Well, they think, oh, it's a fake. Yeah. Will Sweeney, Dabo's son, dropped the ball. Stays on his feet, but did not get to the first down marker. Well, they called the fake, and Will Sweeney just got ahead of himself. He was so excited to make the play, he dropped it not just once, but he dropped it twice. A lot going on there, according to Jeff Flanagan. Problems for Sweeney, and then it wound up in the arms of Laurel Merchant State. Might have been more dollars courtesy of Allstate to Clemson's general scholarship fund, but Dabo Sweeney called for a fake field goal. It did not work. And NC State needing a momentum changer. Perhaps they just got it. Ryan Finley, one of the leading passers in the country, has thrown for 16 yards so far. He throws and incomplete. Mark Fields broke on it quickly, intended for Stephon Lewis. Well, we saw that early in the first possession, a long out route. The ball doesn't get there quite the same way it does when Trevor Lawrence throws it, and Mark Fields jumped on it. Now, you either have to go with a double move if they're jumping on those routes like that, or you got to throw inside breaking routes where the ball can be a little bit more on the line. Ryan Finley's got to get it going here. I mean, he is their only chance if he can get hot throwing the football. Swings it out quickly to Kelvin Harmon. Across the 20, and that's all Trayvon Moen to stop Holly Rowe. Well, guys, Brent Venables told us that the defensive players of Clemson were really fired up, and especially the DBs, after how many receptions they gave up to NC State last year. They have a career high with Jacoby Myers with nine receptions. Another had eight. Louie had six. So they are trying to shut them down. They took it personally. And Finley threw for 338 and three touchdowns last year in Raleigh in a 38-31 Clemson win. Best team in the country on third down is yet to convert today. They, they need to keep this drive going. Oh, for four on third down. They've had the ball for just 10 minutes. Deep back shoulder throw on target. They convert with a big play across the 45 to Jacoby Myers with Isaiah Simmons in coverage. Well, beautiful protection. And then he makes this throw as good as anybody I've seen in college football. Throws it to the back shoulder. He keeps it in the field of play. And when you throw it like that and you anticipate, you can't defend it. They line up in the pistol now. Reggie Gillespie hit down low. Got to the 50, Adnan Verk. All right, Sean, thank you very much. Updating you what happened with Syracuse and UNC. Tommy DeVito, which is the name of Joe Pesci's character in Goodfellas, hit a Ravion Pierce. Cuse wins 40 to 37. DeVito, three touchdown passes after he replaced Eric Dungeon. Sean? Well, he came off the bench and played well, too, in the win against Florida State. Big win for the Orange. That would have been three straight losses after a 4 0 start and a tough loss for that North Carolina team. Coaching staff perhaps fighting for survival there in Chapel Hill. Ricky Person, a nice run. And they're inside the Clemson 40 with another first down, 12 yards on the run. This is the bread and butter play. It's a stretch play. NC State loves it. They like to lead with that fullback slash tight end. He gets a good block on Muse, the safety. And Person with a nice run. 42, Dylan Ottenreef really is an important part of their running game. He couldn't lead the way that time they tried to run behind him but person got stopped for a loss of three and we're under three and a half minutes to go in the half Brian Finley 
23 years old. He'll be 24 in December. In his sixth year of college football, looking for his biggest win as a starting quarterback. It's his 32nd straight start for NC State. 21 and 10 as a starter. In the pass, Person did a good job to get away behind the line of scrimmage. Kendall Joseph missed him. Xavier Thomas, true freshman, brilliant talent, ran him down. One of the things that Clemson wanted to be able to do, both offensively and defensively, was play a lot of guys. They just felt like they played more players than North Carolina State does on a game-in, game-out basis, and that starts to take its toll the longer the game goes. Right now, that looks like Teron Prescott, their starting left guard. Who's I'm Matt Dan Burke coming up on the Lexus Half to Report. An update on Penn State as Indiana right now is giving them all they can handle. Also update you on Bama and Tennessee as it's roll tied over and over again. And tensions high in Michigan as Jim Harbaugh and the Wolverines finally going to beat the Spartans in East Lansing. All that more coming up in the half. Sean, back to you. Uh, Michigan has bounced back very well from the opening loss to Notre Dame. Two and a half to go here, first half. Third down for Ryan Finley and the Wolfpack. They're at the Clemson 39-yard line, third and 10. Low snap, and he has to go to his knees for it. He wasn't ready. The center snapped it before the quarterback wanted the football. Ryan Finley was looking at the coverage. He was going to change the play. Clemson has the ball. It looked like Finley had it. But the sideline for Clemson was jumping up and down saying it's our ball and it did not get back to Finley. No, Finley was reaching for it and his running back, Gillespie, actually knocked it away from him. But the point was he was not ready for the snap and Garrett Bradbury, their veteran center, snapped the ball too soon. And Clemson not only gets the stop on third down, they get the football back. That's a surprising development you mentioned. Bradbury, one of the best centers in the country. 30-second straight start. And really, from the opening kickoff, Todd, it's been one costly mistake after another for NC State. They yeah. whiffed on a couple of the tackles on the 41-yard kickoff return by Darian Kendrick that started the game and ignited the opening drive for Clemson. Two timeouts left for the Tigers. And on first down, it's T. Higgins again, out of bounds. NC State Territory, the 43, first down. Boy, what a costly turnaround this could be for Ryan Finley and North Carolina State. They finally get a drive going. They have to try to convert a third down, and now they're looking at the possibility of the Clemson Tigers adding points to the scoreboard before halftime. Seven catches and 111 yards in the half for Higgins. And that one's to Travion Thompson. Who has a first down at the 22-yard line. Jarius Moore had the safety on the stop. It's man with a free safety, but it's inside leverage. You're inside possession by the safety, Moorhead, who's not used to covering man-to-man -man as much. And that was an easy throw for Trevor Lawrence right down the field. 21-yard gain. Three catches for Thompson. He had four all season entering today's game. Lawrence keeps it. Chased out of bounds at the 18-yard line, pursued by James Smith-Williams. Clemson with two timeouts, so no need to rush at this point. They've got a lot of time on the clock and two timeouts and moving the ball very effectively on this drive. Lawrence, short hitter to Hunter Renfro, a yard short of the first down. Got to believe on third and one here, this ball is going to ETN unless NC State just takes the run away completely. They did give it to ETN. He got. The first down with a yard to spare. Still a minute and 10, so Clemson doesn't have to burn one of their timeouts. Third down and one, just an inside zone play and a good hard nose run by ETN.
First and ten under a minute to go in the half. Each team with two timeouts. Lawrence on the design roll. Leaping attempt for the pylon by Travion Thompson. But I think they're going to spot him out, and they will. A yard short of the first down at the two-yard line. Going on the field, runner was out of bounds. A design roll the first time that they've moved Trevor Lawrence out of the pocket to throw. Accurate throw to the sideline. Yep, yep there it is. A very well officiated yes. first half by Jeff Flanagan, folks in the replay booth as well. So second and one from the two. Perfect on the drive, Lawrence. He's thrown for 244 and a half. Here's ETN with his second touchdown of the game. And his eighth in the last three games. The miscue leads to a touchdown for Clemson. Well, again, the motion with Amari Rogers coming across the formation just kind of affects the eyes a little bit, and that's the inside handoff. The motion, they call that eye candy. Give that defense something to look at that is not what they're supposed to be looking at, and ETN walks into the end zone. Good blocking at the point of attack, too by that Clemson offensive line. Greg Hugel, the extra point. 21-0 Clemson. Will Tonight on ABC, the Big Ten battle between Dwayne Haskins, Heisman Trophy candidate quarterback for number two Ohio State, and the Purdue Boilermakers. Very dangerous team at home tonight. 7.30 Eastern on ABC, and live on the ESPN apps. So you can watch it anywhere. Another touchback, doesn't matter which direction BT Potter is kicking. Here's a look at the AP rankings brought to you by Northwestern Mutual. You said at the beginning of the year, you thought Michigan was the best team in the Big Ten well, East, I, if I recall. Yeah, I did. I thought that they would make it to the playoffs. Uh, obviously, after the loss to Notre Dame, I mean, they, they didn't look great in that game, but really it was only the first half. I think since the first half of that Notre Dame game, Michigan has played better and better. So still you think, think they still are the best? I think it'll be tough for them to beat Ohio State in Columbus, but I think they can get to that game with just the one loss. Yeah, they have Penn State ahead as well. The Penn State team seems to be wobbling right That's now. Kelvin Harmon. Knocked down immediately in a very quick timeout called by timeout. Dave Doran. North Carolina State. Second charge timeout. The timeout will be 30 seconds. Well, rear appearance on Nationwide TV for Ryan Finley today and a tough start for he and his teammates, yeah. Todd. I mean, he really is one of the best quarterbacks in the country. Todd McShay, with an eye toward the draft, has him rated the second best prospect. Yeah in the next draft behind Justin Herbert who we saw last week at Oregon. Yeah, he doesn't have the same arm strength that Justin Herbert had who we saw last week or even that Trevor Lawrence has, but he's very smart, he's very accurate. He just has not been able to get in the rhythm in this game. And, and credit Clemson's defense again, that Holly gave the report. They were upset with what they gave up last year in the game at Raleigh. They have locked down. I mean, Kelvin Harmon, that was just his second catch of the game. He had eight catches for 155 yards against this Clemson defense a year ago. So Clemson's defense very locked in in this first half. Finley throws up for grabs, deflected and intercepted by Kayvon Wallace. For the third year in a row, he has intercepted a pass against NC State. He's trying to bring this one back to the end zone. What an effort by Kayvon Wallace back to the four yard line. It's tight coverage. A.J. Terrell is in great position to create the deflection. Protection's okay. The throw a little bit high. Terrell gets the deflection. And Kayvon Wallace, who really emerged in this North Carolina State game last year, became a starter because of some injuries in the back end and has played at a very high level ever since then. Comes up with the pick and sets up another scoring opportunity. That was reminiscent of last year. He had an interception, ran it back 55 yards to run out the clock and preserved that seven-point win against the Wolfpack up in Raleigh. From the four-yard line, Lawrence. Clemson still has two timeouts as well. They'll probably use one right here. 
Mari Rogers swung down to the line of scrimmage. And it is a quick timeout for Dabo Sweeney. Timeout, Clemson. Second charge timeout. The timeout will be 30 seconds. Well, Finley's terrific, but he's thrown some costly interceptions. 2016, they went into overtime. Vargas Edmond intercepted the pass. Clemson had already scored. And then we mentioned it last year. Avon Wallace, the pick of Finley in the 55 yard return to burn the clock. Avon Wallace in the right place at the right time. And not only gets the turnover, but puts his team with a brilliant return. Board. Clemson has one timeout remaining, please. Clemson has one timeout remaining. Yeah, I mean, that's. <laughs> The numbers speak for themselves. He just has not gotten on track, gotten on rhythm, and uh, Clemson's defense has put the clamps on him and the entire offense. Well, his strengths, when we spoke with him, the accuracy, the most important thing. He's been a loft target today. And Dave Dorn used the word brilliant. Well, this is a young man who graduated from Boise State in three years, degree in psychology, already has a master's degree in liberal studies from NC State, and he has another graduate certificate. Second and goal, option pitch, ETN spins short, one yard line, and they'll use the last timeout with six seconds to go. Do you run another play timeout. or do you kick a field goal? Clemson, third, final charge timeout. The timeout will be 30 seconds. I think with a 21 to nothing lead, the way your defense is playing, I think you can go for the touchdown here. I think they should have kicked it when they went for the fake field goal. Here, I think you run a play and try to score a touchdown. And your defense is just totally dominating the football game. Now, they're going to probably go to their goal line heavy package, which means they'll put a couple of those defensive linemen in the game. Christian Wilkins, Dexter Lawrence might be in there on this and play. If you throw a quick pass, you might get a chance for another play. You can't have, obviously, the tackle and play short of the end zone. But say something for this North Carolina State defense in the sudden change situation. Two plays in a row. Outstanding plays after the long interception return. They did that really well last in their last game. They had four turnovers against Boston College, but it didn't hurt them because the defense really reacted in those sudden change situations. They lost eight defensive starters. They have Christian Wilkins, as you see, lined up in timeout. the offensive backfield. North Carolina State, State third calls a timeout. final charge timeout. They lost their entire front timeout. seven from the nine-win team last year, which was their most win since 2010. And they lost a secondary player as well. So a lot of people had no idea how good yeah. this NC State defense would be. And I think, Todd, some people had that question heading into today as well. Dave Doran bristled when we brought up the fact that they haven't really played a very tough schedule so far. He said, hey, we're a really good team. Yeah. We should be ranked higher than we are. But they would have played a good offensive football team had they been able to play the game against West Virginia. That was the game that they lost because of weather. And so they really hadn't played a great offensive football team. Boston College played that game without A.J. Dillon, the best running back in the ACC, so this is certainly their biggest test. Dave Thorne said, I wish we played West Virginia. I think we would have beat them. Adam Choice, the running back, and Christian Wilkins and Dexter Lawrence, two defensive linemen on the field, and a false start is the indication. False start. Offense number 44. Five-yard penalty. Third down. That, that can't happen. Dabo's very hot with that. I mean, you've got a goal line play. It's going to take some time. Here's the, the movement. It's going to take some time because the quarterback's going to go out and it's just going to be Wildcat. So you got to allow the time for the play to develop. And just they flinch Garrett by the Williams. tight end, Garrett Williams. And now, you know, now you, if you're going to go for it, now you got to throw the football. That was probably going to be a run from the Wildcat behind those two big defensive linemen. And now it looks like he's going to tell Lawrence, don't snap the ball. What is that gesture by Dabo? They're not going to get it off. They don't get it off. Now this has been. Play a game. Offense. Five yard penalty. Ooh. Third down. Yeah, it's been a mess, and uh, the coach, understandably hot. And you think about what he's done here. 
You know, it's his 11th season, 10th full season, took over for Tommy Bowden. Six games into the season when they were three and three. He went four and three as their interim coach, 2008. A lot of people around here said, whoa, we can do better than this yeah. guy, the wide receiver coach. Well, we're Clemson. They kept him, and now <laughs> yeah. these people in this part of the country love the Dabo Sweeney. That's not a strong enough word, and they should. He wins, and he is a terrific human being. And he's a great recruiter. Everybody knew that about him, and uh, boy, they have continued to recruit at an elite level. And here's Hugel. With a 28-yard field goal, still two seconds to go in the half. It's 24 to nothing. Kick off your week seven with Sunday NFL Countdown on ESPN. 10 a.m. Eastern time tomorrow. The crew will break down how Tom Brady and the Patriots and handle Khalil Mack and the Monsters of the Midway. Randy Moss ranks this week's best catches from college football. And you got Moss that Sunday NFL Countdown at 10 a.m. Eastern on ESPN. Well, that little uh, breakdown there at the end will give Dabo some fuel for what he'll talk about in the locker room at halftime. Again, you know, he really loves his team, and he feels like they are ready to really make a surge here in the second half of the season. But you've got to correct little things, mental mistakes, to continue to play at a very high efficiency level if you want to get to the, to the goal of playing for a championship. A lot of kickers would squib it in this instance, but I don't think Potter would the way he bangs it out of the end zone with regularity. And as we said, he should probably squib it. <laughs> Covered by Brady Bodine. Time for a heave if NC State wants to do it. We set the game clock to one second, please. One second. He recovered it. Here are the stats, and if you're an NC State fan, turn away from the television set. It's ugly. And very disappointing. They certainly thought they'd be competitive here today. There's still a half to go, but they have a lot of work to do against one of the best teams clearly in the country. Clemson has now outscored Wake Forest and NC State over the last feed at NC State, and it was all Clemson in the first half 24 to nothing as we head for the third quarter nc state will get the ball first bt potter to kick off with the wind at his back nothing but touchbacks today for bt potter true freshman from rock hill south carolina 39 touchbacks and 47 kickoffs this season, you can add one to each of those numbers. We welcome you back inside the booth. Sean McDonough and Todd Blackledge. NC State came down here, looked like they, as we met with them last night, were determined to prove a point. They have a really good team. They didn't look like it in the first half. What can they do to get back in this game in the second half? They've got to try to establish some kind of rhythm offensively. They just had no rhythm in that first half. They came into this game averaging 6.2 yards per play on first down. In the first half, it was under three yards per play. So they never got on track offensively. And Ryan Finley, who has been brilliant to this point, really struggled with those long yardage situations. He starts in the pistol with the freshman Ricky Person behind him. Comes out firing. Gain of six a moment ago. Holly with Dave Doran. Well, Coach, a couple of crucial errors there to end that half. What did you say to your guys in the locker room about ways to get back in this ball game? I just said that wasn't us. It's not the way we play. It's not the way we train them to play. We're better than that. We just need to go put our head down and work. Come out here and score on opening drive. Stop them on defense. Play our best football for two quarters and see where it puts us. Put it behind them. Like we were playing not to win in that first half. That's not our guys. Let's kind of wake up and go to work here. Well, good start on this drive. Yep. Mecca on Mezzi with the catch and run to the 39. And a first down for NC State. Finley now 9 out of 15 for just 72 yards. Person ran into traffic, did well to bounce off a couple of people and pick up two. Dexter Lawrence made the tackle. Clemson is able to move this defensive front around. It's a four-man defensive front. 
but a lot of times they'll line up in an odd front and put one of those defensive tackles right over the nose. Sometimes they'll get in a bare look where they cover the center and both guards. Finley, a little more life in the step of NC State. There's a flag down near sideline along the line of scrimmage. They're clearly trying to pick up the pace, find a little rhythm. With a lot of work to do in the second half, down by 24. Clemson was offside, so Coach Doran with a decision to make. Offside, defense number 90. Five-yard penalty, second down. And the right decision is yeah. to take it. The play got about six, but you get the down over again if you take the five-yard penalty. Dexter Lawrence lined up offsides on that play, didn't jump. It's lined up in the neutral zone. Remember in that first half, Clemson was jumping on out routes. Double moves here in the second half would be a, a good idea for North Carolina State. Ricky Person, again, excellent penetration. Person did a terrific job to get them very close to the first down. Cleland Farrell made the tackle. Nice run through by Kendall Joseph, though the linebacker, he's the guy that ran through on the backside and slowed down person. Well, the battle of tremendous defensive line against very good offensive line, Clemson controlling the line of scrimmage when NC State has the ball. They gave him the first down, moved the chains, play fake by Ryan Finley. And a deep throw, single coverage, jump ball, and incomplete. Intended for Thayer Thomas, well covered by Kayvon Wallace. Thayer Thomas, a former walk-on, has really had a nice start to his career, but he's not, he's not one of those big receivers. He's more of a possession-type receiver. And so when you throw those 50-50 balls up, he's not going to have the same success rate as a guy like Kelvin Harmon or a guy like Jacoby Myers, a bigger wide receiver might have against this Clemson secondary. And they came in with three receivers in the top 10 in the ACC in receptions per game. But Myers has just three today. Harmon has two and Amezi has two. They snapped it with one on the play clock. Ricky Person earning every inch that he's getting in this opening drive. Stepped away from Isaiah Simmons, flag down. Well, I, I mentioned how they shift and move their defensive line. It was a shift to a bare front, and Christian Wilkins, who is so quick off the football, just Holding got in. Offense number 71, 10 yard penalty, second down. Joel Skol Skoltorp was the guilty party. I actually thought it was the center, Garrett Bradbury, who got called for the hold for ripping down Christian, Christian Wilkins. Wilkins on number 70. I still think it was 65, <laughs> based on what I saw. Well, Prescott now called for the penalty. Each team penalized four times. And after some positive momentum to start this drive, North Carolina State putting themselves in those difficult down and distance situations again. Finley, short throw. Toby Myers, tough run after the catch. He finally got spun down by Kendall Joseph and Kayvon Wallace at the 48-yard line. They still need 11 more for a first down. Three thirty-five per game entering today. Way below that, but just 81 yards today. You wonder if they get seven or eight yards or nine yards here if Dave Doran isn't thinking about going for it on fourth down. Best in the country on third down coming in, one for six today. Because they've had a lot of these medium and long yardage situations to convert. They're coming after Finley. He had time, he got it off. And the tackle made by Myers, is there a face mask? Yes. There is. Yanked down by Kayvon Wallace, and that penalty will give Dave Doran's Wolfpack a first down. Yeah, at first it looked like it was gonna be a heck of a foul. foul. Face mask number 12 on the defense, 15 yard penalty. He added to the end of the run, first down. First, it looked like Kayvon Wallace was going to make a heck of a play, stopping Myers short of the first down. He's right there to make the tackle. He's got that hand up around the face mask. 
good call. First down now for North Carolina State. And I think the guy Kelvin Harmon has got to show up here for North Carolina State, number three. The sixth in the nation entering today, 107 receiving yards per game. Harmon has two catches for 13 yards. Finley deep into traffic, and it's ripped away. Jalen Williams. You don't normally like to throw late into the middle of the field, but this is what North Carolina State does. They throw to their big receivers and say win. That time Clemson won. Number three Clemson, number 16 NC State. Another turnover by the Wolfpack and Clemson on offense for the first time in the second half. And Hunter Renfro could not rescue the errant throw from Trevor Lawrence. A little bit too quick on that one getting the ball out. Frustrating day for Ryan Finley. He's now thrown two interceptions. The pick by Jalen Williams, just the second of his career. He's a graduate student. Really made a remarkable play. I mean, <laughs> a difficult interception that he made. He doesn't play a lot. Averages 20 snaps per game this year. Good catch by T. Higgins. He's already had the most catches he's had in the game he had seven at the half he has eight now for 119 yards they've targeted him nine times he has eight catches there's Jalen Williams one of 17 college graduates on this Clemson team only UAB with 18 has more nationally he has a degree in psychology third down and two and the Wolfpack force a three and out Travis Etienne did not get there. They have totally bottled him up. And they even told Dave Dorn Clemson would have 45 yards rushing in the third quarter. You'd feel like we might even be ahead. Well, that's that's how they build their defense. Their defense is set up structurally to stop the run first. That's their main priority. Most defenses are, but they really, in the way they play coverage on the back end, they commit bodies to stop the run. They've done that. But they've given up some plays in the passing game and they've hurt themselves offensively and with a couple turnovers. Will Spires will punt for the third time. There, Thomas back deep. It's a tough sun. Most of the field is now in the shadows here in the evening. In Clemson, coming up on six o'clock locally. That one went into the shadows, made it an easier catch for Thomas at the 31. 38 62nd annual Tiger Rama, huge student run pep rally, one of the biggest in the nation. Coach Sweeney and the players, as you saw, made an appearance, and today they're playing in front of a sellout crowd, about 81,000 here at Memorial Stadium, trying to watch Clemson go to 7 and 0, trying to do that for the seventh time in school history, and for the third time in the last four years. Which means if you did the math, Dabble Sweeney said as many 7 0 starts as the rest of the Clemson coaches all time combined. Cleland Furl, and he did tell us it's pronounced Furl, is in referral, sent Gillespie backwards. Here's a look at the interception. Well, I always want to show you something. So there's two safeties here, right? So they're split, which tells the quarterback you can either throw it here or in the middle. Here's the guy you said, Sean, who doesn't play very much, right? Jalen Williams. This is a Tampa 2 coverage. He has the middle of the field. He's a linebacker running back underneath a wide receiver route and makes a, an incredible interception. A guy who has not played much comes on the field on third down and makes a big time play. Uncharacteristic mistakes the last couple of weeks by Ryan Finley. Their last game was two weeks ago against Boston College. He's on target there to see Jay Riley. He threw two really bad yeah, interceptions they were in that both game. Bad. bad decisions from a guy who Dave Dorn says is brilliant and he's obviously very smart. And they won that game, Todd, despite the fact they had four turnovers in the game, had a block punt and a block field goal, still beat BC. Well, again, BC was playing without their best player, A.J. Dillon, and I think the North Carolina State defense was able to withstand those turnovers. Today, not the same deal. Third down and four. They had a nice drive before the interception. Now they have a deep ball, and they still can't win one. 
And Coach Dorn was raving about Jacoby Myers. He says it's one of the best receiving cores in the country. They haven't made any kind of big plays for Ryan Finley today. Well, this time he was able to run by Jalen Williams, but the safety, Tanner Muse, comes over and knocks the ball out. Excellent play by Tanner Muse, the free safety. A guy who typically is really strong against the run did a nice job on the pass that time. If you were Ryan Finley, would you expect your receiver to catch that ball? I would expect him to go up and fight for it a little bit more. You know, you're, you're maybe not going to make the easy catch, but you got to go up and fight for it. A.J. Cole, the punt to the sideline, and Amari Rogers shoved out immediately. 46-yard punt, C.J. Riley the cover. Trevor Lawrence today, 22 of 31, 252 yards and a touchdown. A lot of times he's just doing math. If he sees a lot of bodies committed to stop the run, he's going to throw the football. Again, North Carolina State, they were bent on stopping Travis Etienne in this running game. That opened up the big play for the touchdown off of play action. And Trevor Lawrence taking what the defense gives. In this case, they want to stop the run or bring pressure. You're going to leave one on one. He's going to make you pay for that with big time throws. We can see him make all the throws that you would want a quarterback to make. Handles the pressure very well. Eight for ten against the Blitz. Gave it to Tavian Feaster. Didn't get anything. Shook Frazier. Down goes Frazier and Tavian Feaster at the line of scrimmage. But you're right, Sean. I mean, if, if you would sit there and say, okay, they are only going to have 46 yards rushing, and they come in the fourth best running team in college football, you say, we're in great shape. But you're not. And, and that's because this offense is not just built to only do one thing. If you're going to take away the run, Trevor Lawrence and his ability to stretch the field throwing it is going to find a way to beat you that one. Lawrence on target. Catch made by DeAndre Overton. And it goes back to what we were talking about at the top of the telecast, the very beginning time. We said, Dabo Sweeney said, I think our team is about to explode because we can beat you any way we have to beat you. We can run it down your throat. We can run away from you. We can throw it all over the field. We can beat you with our defense and our special teams. And they've proven that today. They've been running through everybody lately. Can't run it today. So they've gone to the career high 260 yards for Trevor Lawrence. And the catch not made. Jermaine Pratt had the coverage on Tavian Feaster. And it's been a sluggish third quarter. A couple of punts already for Clemson, still leading 24 to nothing as it was at the half. Yeah, that, that throw was just too high by Trevor Lawrence. When you're throwing to a back out of the backfield, you don't want to make him have to reach for the ball. Jermaine Pratt, as a former safety, he was in good coverage position on a running back. A little different going against a wide receiver, but he was in perfect position to knock that ball loose against a running back. Thayer Thomas back for the punt from Will Spires. Oh, low line drive. Got a great bounce. And out of bounds near the 25 yard line. Wound up being a 51. He's an eight year old boy in a hoax body and Christian is the funny flamboyant one and Austin Bryant, well we just annoy him. <laughs> yeah, great chemistry. Best defensive line in the country. It's a Clemson defense. They gave three points two weeks ago in their last game at Wake Forest and zero today. And that's Dexter Lawrence taking down Ricky Person. They're so deep. They get a lot of time on that sideline. That line is fresh. They have outstanding backups. Matter of fact, Furl told us that Albert Huggins, senior, he thinks he's an NFL player. Yeah. He's a backup defensive line. Playing his best football in his final year. Number 67, Person again, and very little again. Neither team has run the ball today. Logan Rudolph was in there that that possession too. He's uh, a young guy that they uh, have a little bit of fun with. Redshirt freshman out of Rock Hill, South Carolina. He's number 54. He's the brother of Mason Rudolph, the former Oklahoma State quarterback. And now with the Steelers, he's lined up as the right defensive end just outside the tackle. Third down and seven, under six minutes to go in the third quarter. Rudolph twisted inside, didn't get anywhere near Finley. Who throws back across the middle, and they still can't win a 50-50 ball for him. Kelvin Harmon, well defended by Nolan Turner. 
And that ball back across the middle just floats in the air for a long time, and Nolan Turner able to make the play. Good coverage downfield. Finley not able to throw the ball anywhere on rhythm. And then punting the football again. A.J. Cole to Amari Rogers. Seeing Finley for the first time in person, Todd, he certainly doesn't have the same zip on the ball. It's a fake. It's a fake. And they're in trouble. Wow. And down goes Brady Bodine. Well played. Denzel Johnson there to snuff it out. Really well played. I mean, they did a great job of maintaining leverage. This player right here is going to maintain leverage. He's going to force everything back in. Once he reads the fake, watch. He's not going to let the guy get outside. Forces it back in where the help is, and Denzel Johnson gets the stop. Great discipline by the Clemson special team. Who were certainly alert for the possibility of a fake in this score and time situation. They take over at the 22 of NC State. Travis Etienne, the running back, has already scored two today. If he scores one more rushing touchdown, he'll be the only player in Clemson history to score three rushing touchdowns in three consecutive games. He got six on first down. They stick with him. Gets ripped down by Jermaine Pratt after a gain of two more. Well, there's no question that North Carolina State has been locked into Travis Etienne and, and really know that you have to wrap him up and get him on the ground. But he, uh, he has had a magnetic attraction for this North Carolina State defense today. They, they're not going to let him get going. <laughs> well, came in averaging 9.2 per carry, Etienne 2.8 per rush today, 36 yards on 13 carries. He was second in the nation. In timeout, Clemson. Yards per rush. First charge, timeout. Timeout, 4.28 to go, third quarter. Team of the week. Clemson with national championship aspirations, leading 24 to nothing. Our week seven Monday night football matchup has Saquon Barkley, Odell Beckham Jr., the Giants in Atlanta to take on Julio Jones, Matt Ryan, and the Falcons. That's at 8.15 Eastern on ESPN. Simulcast on ESPN2 in Spanish. Been a rough year for the Giants, despite the fact that Barkley, as expected, has done some very nice things in his rookie season. Super talented guy, great kid. Hard worker. That'll be a star in the NFL. Third down and two for Clemson, just inside the 15 of NC State. After the fake to Travis Etienne, the pass caught. Down to the goal line, Mylon Richard and denied a half yard short by Nick McLeod. So this is a zone read play, Sean, but instead of the quarterback keeping on the run, you slip the tight end out as a pass receiver. A delay route by Mylon Richard. Really nice play, trying to get it to the end zone. What a view from our progressive <laughs> pylon camera. Perfect. ATN makes history. Three rushing touchdowns for the third consecutive game. The first Clemson Tiger ever to do that. They keep doing it the same way. They put the motion that, that affects the eyes of the North Carolina State defense. And then he just walks in the end zone. Here comes the motion. It affects guys. And then they just slip it right in here behind good zone blocking. Tight end. He didn't get the touchdown, Mylon Richard, but he got a nice block there on the linebacker to free up ETN. Greg Hugel adds the extra point. 31 nothing. Back at Memorial Stadium, the sold out crowd delighted what they've seen today. They just watched history. Travis ETN, part of our athletic. Game fact, the first Clemson player to score three rushing touchdowns in three straight games. Did it against Syracuse, and he helped rescue that game with 203 yards rushing. Three more at Wake Forest two weeks ago, and then after a bye week, 
three more on an otherwise quiet day for the sophomore from Jennings, Louisiana. We visited with him yeah. on Thursday afternoon. He is delightful. You know, some people just exude warmth yeah. and radiate goodness, and he's one of those people. Well, he had a beautiful smile, you know, and, and he smiled pretty much the whole time. He was very respectful, said, yes, ma'am, yes, sir, to Holly and to you and, me and myself. And he just, uh, and like we were told, he, I don't think he realizes how good he is. I mean, he... You know, he's very serious. He said even growing up, he didn't watch a lot of college football. He was an outdoor guy, liked horses and four-wheelers and those kind of things growing up in a small town in Louisiana. But boy, he's a football player now. Everyone was after him. He said it was hard to say no to his in-state LSU Tigers, but like so many, he came here and was captivated by the family atmosphere that has been cultivated. Ricky Person, the ball carrier on first down. Cleveland Furl made the tackle. Oops, busted play. Ryan Finley slides down for no gain with Isaiah Simmons. Closing in, and there's a flag on the play. And if the play wasn't ugly enough, there was a flag on top of it. Yeah, it's pretty hard to get a holding, holding call on 65 a offense, play. 10 yard penalty, second down. Matt Bockhorst, excuse me, he plays for Clemson. It's Garrett Bradbury, the yes, center. Garrett Bradbury, the center. We flip our chart back to the other side. He's had a rough day, he uncharacteristically has. so. Most believe he's the best center in the ACC. So second and 13. Ryan Finley against the four-man rush. Short crosser is Jacoby Myers, and he's tackled immediately by Nolan Turner. I hope you all had a chance to see Marty Smith's piece about Nolan Turner, his dad, the late Kevin Turner, played at Alabama for the New England Patriots. Close friend of Dabo Sweeney, lost his battle with ALS. And he texted Dabo Sweeney, and Dabo read the text of Kevin Turner's funeral about it. As much as he's scared to leave his children, he feels good knowing that his son's future will be molded by a man like Dabo Sweeney. And they think Nolan Turner might have an NFL future just as his dad played with distinction. Whoa. Another ball up for grabs. And that's another example, Todd, of what I started to ask you about a few minutes ago when we got sidetracked. Partial foul, roughing the passer, number 42 defense. 15-yard penalty, first down. You watch Lawrence throw it, he throws it on a rope. We watched Justin Herbert throw it last week, he throws it on a rope. A lot of these balls from Finley look doesn't, like they need more zip, and they don't have it. Doesn't have the same zip, which means you have to throw with better anticipation, you have to be extremely accurate, and you have to throw everything on time. And he has just not been on his game on those things today. He has been during the course of the year, but I really think this defensive front, which was not able to affect him and rattle him last year, I think it has affected him in the ball game today. And last year they were a better rushing team. The Clemson coaches talked to us about that yesterday. They didn't fear the run. He said last year you really had to respect the NC yeah. State run. We're pretty sure they're not going to be able to run the ball against us this year. Thayer Thomas, the catch. They're approaching midfield. They've only run four plays on Clemson's side of midfield, the Wolfpack. And for the second time, Tyrone Prescott is time out down on the injury. field. You know, last year, NC State also had a player, Jalen Samuels, who's now in the NFL, who was a very versatile guy. They could line him up as a back, as a receiver. He could run Wildcat. And his ability really, you know, made it hard for defenses to zero in on what North Carolina State was trying to do. They don't have that kind of player this year. So they're more predictable by their personnel groups that are on the field. And, and I think that Clemson has really been locked into their tendencies in this ballgame. Here's today's unexpected outcome brought to you by Exxon Mobil. And even though he is playing one of the best defenses in the country, maybe the best, certainly unexpected that. Ryan Finley would have just 106 yards passing with 2.11 to go in the third quarter. Yeah, and, and like we said earlier, if Dave Dorn would have said, hey, you're going to hold them to 55 yards rushing, great. I'm happy about that. 
But you know what? Your quarterback's only going to throw for 106, and you're going to be one for nine on third downs. He's, uh-oh. <laughs> Things aren't going good for us. Some and they're drop not. balls. I go right back to the opening kickoff. Poor tackling. Gave Clemson some juice on the opening play of the game. 41-yard kickoff return. Got the game started. But Clemson in great field position for their opening touchdown drive. Second and five. Finley keeps. And again, I, I guess that count is a slide. I'm looking at Bill Lamont here. <laughs> I think he kind of went more head first on that one, didn't he? Yeah. So uh, Bill's nodding his head. They should mark it where he started to give himself up and head to the turf. Nolan Turner again credited with the tackle. It was more of a crumple than a slide, yes. I think. He knows what he needs for the first down. I think he's determined to try to get there and just. Let's uh, yeah. bring in Bill Lamagne. Bill, you think they spotted the ball right just about up against the 50-yard uh, line? When I first saw it, I thought he was going into a slide. But when I saw that replay, that description Todd gave crumpled, that pretty well sums yeah. it up. So he should get where the ball is when he's down. Todd's a linguist. I tell you. Well, no. The yeah. very handsome sport coach today. He brought out his uh, A <laughs> outfit today for the battle of two unbeatens. So they're short of the first down. Brian Finley, a great competitor. He was a national level roller hockey player as a kid. They say whatever they compete in, golf, he's a seven handicap. He is a ferocious competitor from a very athletic family out in the beautiful Valley of the Sun in Arizona. How about that effort? Person driving the legs and getting enough for the first down. He took Kendall Joseph along with him for a ride. Good tough run by a true freshman, 6'1", 210 pounder out of Wake Forest, North Carolina. Just runs right through the tackle of Kendall Joseph. Joseph trying to wrap him up. Tackled him high, trying to get him to the ground, can't get him down to the ground. Out of the pistol, Ryan Finley with Ricky Person behind him. Quick pop there, Thomas, gain of eight, Holly Rowe. Well, guys, attrition is not going in North Carolina State's favor on the offensive line. Two offensive linemen out right now. Prescott, number 70. In his place, you see number 71, Joe Scothorpe. We've seen him earlier today. But also, Justin Witt was taken to the locker room. His replacement, Tyrone Riley, number 55, is in at right tackle. Riley's well, a guy who played defensive end the last two years. They just move him over to offensive tackle as a redshirt junior. Finley. Good pocket presence and on target. First down, C.J. Riley upended by A.J. Terrell. 20-yard well, you, gain. You put a new tackle in there, try to give him help because he's working against Christian Wilkins. So watch Person, the tailback, come in there and get a chip and help. He's not going to be able to handle the guy by himself. You give him a little help with a running back, and that gives the quarterback time to make the throw. Coming up on the end of the quarter, this is the deepest penetration of the day for NC State, and another tough run, this one by Reggie Gillespie. They'll give him the nine-yard line for a pickup of 11, and a Wolfpack first down, another tackle by Nolan Turner. End of the third quarter. Number three, Clemson, leading NC State, 31 to nothing. Presented by PlayStation 4, we continue Dr. Pepper's championship drive game of the week. Clemson very much a national championship contender. Leading Ryan Finley an undefeated NC State 31 to nothing as we go to the fourth quarter. It's the first snap of the red zone today for the Wolfpack. Reggie Gillespie into the end zone with a Wolfpack touchdown. Well, this is their play, the stretch play. Beautiful job blocking by the right side. Watch the guard here lead out on this stretch play. The back has to just keep pressing this to the outside, find a crease, and get inside. That new right tackle, Tyrone Riley, got to the second level and got a block, but Joshua fed Jackson, the right guard, number 66, the key block on the play. There's Christopher Dunn, true freshman kicker. They've had a lot of kicking problems in recent years. They hope he will solve them. He's been 
been solid so far. Nine yard touchdown run by Reggie Gillespie and the extra point makes it 31 to seven. Four seconds into the fourth quarter. So back it goes to Trevor Lawrence. And he arrived on campus in January. Since he got here, they've had a number of quarterbacks leave. Including Zarek Cooper's Jacksonville State. He was terrific in the spring game. So Hunter Johnson, once considered the top high school quarterback prospect in the country, transferred to Northwestern. Kelly Bryant, the returning starter, started the first four games. Lawrence played in all of them. He played better than Bryant in the opinion of most, including most importantly, Dabo Sweeney. Yeah. So when Lawrence became the starter, Kelly Bryant decided uh, he was going to leave. He's already visited North Carolina. We know that he was at Arkansas today, yep. Kelly Bryant. Of course, Chad Morris used to coach here at Clemson, was the guy who recruited Deshaun Watson, so that possibility would make sense. It was really interesting, too, when we talked to Cleveland Furrow yesterday. He told us, you know, Kelly Bryant's still part of our family. He still is in contact with a lot of the players, still talks to Trevor. He's pulling for us. We're pulling for him. I think a lot of the outside idea might have been that you know, he was abandoning the team completely. Onside kick. And recovered by Nolan Turner. Here's Holly. And guys, as you were talking about, Kelly Bryant has been making some trips to try to decide where he would like to play next season. He's already graduated from Clemson. Um, he did only play in four games, so he's able to transfer easily. North Carolina was his stop last week against Virginia Tech, and then he was at Arkansas today. As you said, Chad Morris helped recruit Kelly Bryant. He knows that system that Chad Morris likes to run. He might be a natural fit there, but I, I've heard that someone from ESPN might be talking to Kelly this week for an interview, so hopefully we'll hear his side of things. Hollywood scoops all over the place. Trevor Lawrence, there's no doubt he's a better thrower. Yeah. TJ Chase, the catch. Well, and here's the thing, and, and this is why I believe Dabo made the move when he did and why it was the right move. I think Clemson could beat anybody in the ACC with either quarterback, Kelly Bryant or Trevor Lawrence. I don't know that they can beat Alabama or a team in the college football playoff to win a national championship if they can't throw the football well. And Trevor Lawrence gives them a better opportunity to throw the football well. Take a look. In the last three times Clemson has played Alabama, they came close in 15 and lost. They won in 16, but it was Deshaun Watson throwing the football that made the difference. Last year in the semifinal game that I did, they shut down the Clemson run and then just said, if you can beat us throwing at Kelly Bryant, then have at it. And, and they were able to control the entire game. Even this game against NC State last year, Bryant did a nice job running, but they felt like they left a lot of big plays on the field to the passing game because he didn't make the plays. Intended receiver there, Will Sweeney. I don't think Trevor Lawrence is there quite yet. I mean, he still has got to grow and, and, and get more comfortable with everything he's doing. But the arm talent is there, and the perimeter players and the wide receivers that they have are in place that, that this offense, I think, is ready to just really take a huge leap as they make a push towards that play. Lawrence sets up a screen. Great patience by Etienne, and then the explosion. He stays in bounds, or did he? They're going to mark him out at the 15-yard line. Boy, they spent the bye week, Jeff Scott told us, working a lot on their screen game, which hadn't been very good. This was beautiful. Oh, and watch the little limp leg move by Travis Etienne right here, just uh, uh, and boom. And there's that burst, that explosiveness that he has, that sprinter speed. We haven't seen it in the running game today, but we see a glimpse of it right there on that play. Nice little hesitation and add about 15 more yards to the play. Nine different Clemson players have caught a pass from Lawrence today. ETN inside the 15 yard line. Holly. Well, it was good to see them throw it to ETN right there. They've been trying to work him in more in that game in practice this week that we saw. And he said, you know, the guys were really giving me a hard time. Why don't they ever throw it to you? You must have terrible hands. So he's actually been staying after practice every day, working with their jugs machine. So people quit teasing him and he can pick up big games like that. Had five catches for the year entering today. Adam Choice. Inside the 10-yard line, we're approaching 13 minutes to go. Isaiah Moore 
made the stop. Will they put ETN back in for a chance for a fourth <laughs> touchdown and 10 in three games? Yeah, they're changing a lot of people. They just took their starting center. They're all ACC center. Justin Falsinelli out of the game. Got their backup in, Gage Cervenka now at center. A neat start on most teams. Yeah. We saw him against Syracuse come into the game late and have some key blocks. And a historic game winning drive. Oh, into traffic. A strike thrown by Lawrence. And Justin Ross could not hang on. Yeah, this is a ball that Justin Ross is probably going to catch most of the time. But Jermaine Pratt, number three, is going to come in here, make a hit. But nice work also by Nick McLeod getting a hand in there and fighting that football loose. This is a ball you expect Justin Ross, a big receiver, to make. Credit Nick McLeod and Jermaine Pratt for combining for good defense there. So here's Hugel. He came as a walk-on. Sat in the stands here as a freshman in 2014. He's about to become the second all-time leading scorer in Clemson history behind only Chandler Cat and Zero. Just a there's Clemson making history in the ACC. They won three straight ACC football titles, trying to make it four in a row. Since the advent of conference championship games in 1992, the only Power Five conference team to win four straight conference championships, Florida, back in the early and mid 90s, those great Gator teams. A lot of history being made by this yeah. Clemson football program, and it helps when you have a defensive line like this bunch. Well, you got to pick your poison. Who do you want to spend most of your time trying to block? Christian Wilkins, so quick off the ball, his initial quickness. Austin Bryant, teams like to try to run at him, but he's gotten so much more physical in defending the run. Cleveland Farrell, Farrell, he does a little bit of everything. Rushes the passer, plays the run, long arms, strong hands, and then the big guy in the middle, Dexter Lawrence, Athletic, strong, powerful, can't move them out of the middle. I mean, who do you try to double? Who do you try to pay most attention to? Because they're all three, all four NFL caliber guys. Ryan Finley. Lots of time this time. Deep heave. Incomplete. Intended for Kelvin Harmon. Back in the studio at Nan Burke. Well, Sean McDonough, an update for you on Penn State. They got their hands full here with Indiana, but Trace McSorley after a 94-yard kickoff return from Jonathan Thomas. That's a 200 yards passing for McSorley and the one touchdown scramble. Coming up next, we got LSU and Joe Burrow, number five team in the country. They shocked Georgia, got Mississippi State now. Sean, back to you. Yeah, it's a dangerous game for LSU. Joe Burrow's done what they wanted him to do. Yeah. Provide some stability. And leadership. Just yeah. got Moxie and guys respond to him. Gillespie stepping over bodies, weaving past a couple more along the sideline. And out, pushed out by Isaiah Simmons. You no, know, we won't see this guy probably anymore, Christian Wilkins. But I should mention, Holly talked about his leadership earlier. He's also a semifinalist for the Campbell Trophy, which is Kind of like the equivalent of the Academic Heisman Award. They give the award out at the College Football Hall of Fame dinner in New York. I mean, what a, not just a great leader, but a great representative of Clemson University. Clemson graduated with a degree George in communications in two and a half years. In today's game from our progressive pylon cam, just one touchdown for NC State. Reggie Gillespie, it's 31 to 7, 34 to 7, Clemson as we go to Holly Rowe. Well, Todd, just to follow up on your story about Christian Wilkins and his great academics, he is the youngest of eight children, and every single member of his family has their college degree. I just think that's exceptional from his family and his mother. And leading up to this season, he needed a little extra cash because, you know, he stayed and didn't go pro. So he actually spent his time this offseason as a kindergarten teacher, just picking up a little extra cash, you know, <laughs> teaching kindergarten. <laughs> Hello, Mr. Wilkins. Yeah. Well, one of the best descriptions I heard of him is that he looks at most things through a different lens than other people do. Ryan Finley on third down and three. And it's been that kind of a day. C.J. Riley was open, but he and Finley were not on the same page. Coming into the game, we talked about Ryan Finley, his decision-making, his accuracy, his confidence in his receiving core, the big-bodied receivers. They just have not gotten anything going today. 
And I think, you know, we've talked about the defensive front. I think we got to talk about Trayvon Mullen and A.J. Terrell in the back end. The two corners, I think, have been outstanding today for Clemson. No big plays in the passing game for North Carolina State. A.J. Cole's sixth punt. Fair catch. Amari Rogers, 11 career high, his third start, his seventh appearance. He's appeared in every game, started the last three. This year for Clemson, 308. He had never had a 200 yard game prior to today. But again, North Carolina State came in and said, You're not going to run the football on us. Travis Etienne's not going to beat us. We're going to commit to stopping that. They held him to 61 yards, and Trevor Lawrence threw for over 300. And Chase Bryce is in. Now the backup quarterback. He was third string prior to the departure of Kelly Bryant. And their national championship hopes may very well yeah. still be alive because of this Absolutely. young man who led them back in the second half against Syracuse after Lawrence left with a neck strain late in the first half against the Orange. His first play of the game when he was in there was scary. And Dabo Sweeney said, oh boy, let's take a knee, go to the locker room, try to calm him down, figure out what we can do to still try to win the game. DeAndre Overton refusing to go down. And he wound up out by midfield. Here's a look back at September 29th. Fourth down and six. Still trailing at the time under three minutes to go. Dabo elected to go for it from midfield. That was a 20-yard strike to T. Higgins. And the coaches told us we weren't supposed to run. They, yeah. they always keep it on that play. He yeah. kept it, ran around the end for 17 to get him inside the 20. Well, when we talked to the coaches about him, the first word they all said was moxie. He, he's got some belief in himself and some moxie. Won a state championship at Grayson High School in Georgia. Really good high school football program. And in that game, he made a pass to Hunter Renfro, and Renfro made a great catch, and it seemed to just calm him down, to settle him down. And the longer he played, the more confident and competent he looked in the game. And that game-winning drive, I mean, he made big-time plays to put them in a position to win the football game. Dabo said the locker room after that game was so emotional and so much excitement and enthusiasm because of how they won. On target. Justin Ross, who said he'd be an every down player and the feature of the passing game on a lot of teams. He's just another guy in this Clemson receiving core 24 yard completion. Well, a little RPO. The linebackers get brought up because of the run fake. That leaves one on one coverage. And Justin Ross, uh, he, again, he's he and T. Higgins are, they almost look identical. Great skill set with the football. Fake to Lynn J. Dixon, another. Very talented freshman. Ross, another catch, good for eight. Adnan. Clemson in control. This last matchup for Power Five unbeatens this season. There's Lynn J. Dixon, and he's inside the 10. First and goal, a 15-yard game. You know what that's called? That's called fresh legs. <laughs> this is a tired defense, and those are fresh legs by Lynn J. Dixon because he broke out of about three arm tackles. And for him, this is his time to shine. True freshman from Butler, Georgia. He was one of the three players in their last game at Wake Forest who rushed for over 100 yards. Matter of fact, they all had over 125. Dixon had 10 carries, 163, and two touchdowns that were both 50-plus. He can fly. And he's also pretty powerful at 5'10", 195, as he gets them inside the two. Boy, really nice job by the backup center, Gage Cervenka. He got a block going to his right. It peeled around and got a block going back to the other side to help that run. Lynn J. Dixon, the touchdown. The third of his freshman season, all in the last two games. Well, again, watch. Cervenka and Stewart, the right guard in the center. Watch these two guys work in combination. Open up the hole. Another running touchdown for the Clemson offense. J.C. Chalk, backup tight end out there, number 25 as well, helping to lead the way. He's the grandson of Gene Stallings. 
legendary football coach at Alabama, Devil Sweeney's coach, when he played for the Crimson Tide. An embarrassment of riches, talent, and a lot of young talent with years to go. Mississippi State and LSU should be a high-level game, big game, both in the SEC and LSU trying to push its way into the college football playoff, and then LeBron's home debut as a Laker at 10.30 Eastern time tonight. Well, that LSU game so important because they get a week off after this leading into the Alabama game on November 3rd. And we talked about, you know, this Clemson team is a team that has been pushed. They've been tested and challenged and faced adversity. Alabama has not yet. Running away with another one today against Tennessee, but when they go to Baton Rouge, that will be the first real test, I think, that the Crimson Tide will face. My point being, LSU needs to take care of their business today if they yes. want to make that game all that it could possibly be. Really boosted their cause with the win over Georgia, knocking Georgia from the ranks of the undefeated. Ricky Person weaved his way out to the 44-yard line and a first down for NC State. So here are the SEC standings, the only remaining undefeated team in conference play, Alabama. Surprising team in there is the Florida Gators. Dan Mullen, his first year after leaving Mississippi State. Gators playing great defensive football right now. Brady Bodine gets the call, graduate student, former walk-on, real fan favorite in Raleigh. Dad's a military man, lieutenant colonel in the Marines. Wayne Bodine, who's spent a lot of time over in Afghanistan while Brady has been playing for NC State. Jacoby Myers. And a very nice tackle in the, the open the field the by Denzel Johnson, another backup red shirt junior from just up the road in Columbia, South Carolina. Well, another third down situation. The Wolfpack coming into the game. Best in the country. 61% conversion. They are 2 of 10 today. My quick Syracuse math tells me that is 20%. That is great math. Finley will battle all the way to the end. He is a competitor. You noted earlier that completion gets them within a yard of the first down. Kobe Myers and Dan Dorn will. Uh, Dave Dorn. I have a friend back home, Dan Dorn. I knew <laughs> I was going to call him Dan Dorn at least once today. I think I've now done it twice. They're going to go for it on fourth and one. Trying to rebuild some confidence with an eye toward the rest of the season, and that didn't have the chance. Bodine blown up behind the line of scrimmage with Xavier Thomas, the brilliant freshman from Florence, South Carolina, first among many there. Well, they just really crashed in here. Watch the linebacker first get penetration right here. That's going to force the run back inside. Bodine can't bust it out. And then he goes right into the waiting arms, primarily of Xavier Thomas. Brent Venables likes what he sees. It has been a dominant defensive effort today for his crew. This is an offense that pushed him to the brink a year ago in Raleigh. And they have just had the answer for everything today. 243 total yards of offense today for North Carolina State. Deep down the depth chart now, that's Darian Wrencher, the ball carrier, just his third of the year. Here's Holly Rowe. Well, guys, for NC State fans wondering why that was the running back in on that fourth down play, it's because Person is getting looked at on the sideline. He's had an ongoing labrum issue. The trainers have been over there looking at hip, that hip, trying to stretch that out. They said that his labrum just gets hot throughout the course of the game. He's got some debris in there. So, unfortunate that he couldn't be on the field on that big play. Well, he was grabbing at his hamstring at the end of that run as well. He has battled through it, missed a couple of games early in the year. Incomplete pass. Yeah, he's a talented guy. I mean, there's no question about it. He missed the entire spring football rehabbing from a hand injury, and then he got this other injury, the labrum hip 
deal. And uh, we asked Dave Norton, you know, is he 100 percent now? He says, no, he won't be 100 percent until the season's over. He's going to have to get something done to it to get him corrected. He's playing kind of through injuries, as is Gillespie right now for this North Carolina State offense. There are players on the field now for Clemson who aren't even on the depth chart. <laughs> this guy is Justin Ross. Well, what was the game? Uh, they, who, they played, somebody played all 72 Georgia players. Tech, they took. I Georgia Tech, Georgia Tech. They yeah. wanted Georgia Tech yeah. earlier in the year. They played every guy who made the trip. Justin Ross, we talked to Jeff Scott yesterday, said, no, we're going to play eight receivers, maybe more. They play more today now. Right. The deep bench players getting in. So, you know, we want to roll eight because at the end of the game, we want our guys to be fresh. He said, especially against a team like NC State, McLeod and Ingram, the two yeah. corners, they never come off the field. Yeah. So if they're out there for four quarters defending our team, and we have a guy out there at wide receiver who's a stud who's played 18 snaps, right. we feel like we're going to have an advantage. And in a game like this, with the score like this, it doesn't matter so much. But in a close game, you better believe it matters. That time Ingram able to stay with it and knock that ball out. It's a nice throw by Bryce intended for Kendrick. Flags are down. It's a nice Kendrick play. set the tone for the day with this kickoff return. In the very first play of the game, 41 yards. After the play, on sportsmanlike conduct, number 15 on the defense. Number 15 is first on sportsmanlike conduct foul. I mean, that's the penalty is 15 yards, first down. Dave Dorn knows it's dumb. I mean, it was a great play, but dude, your team is down 41 to seven. You don't have to do a dance and celebrate making a play, doing your job, defending a play in the end zone. Chase Bryce, the backup quarterback, flips it. That's Will Sweeney. And he's knocked down immediately. Brock Miller made the tackle. Backup linebacker, redshirt sophomore. Out of Port St. Lucie, Florida. He missed a lot of last year in shoulder surgery, so he's just getting back into the swing of things. Wrencher, the running back. He was originally a walk-on. Rice looked in his direction and then fired it a bit too far out ahead of Justin Ross with Nick McLeod in coverage. Now, I guess what Coach Scott said about the defense of NC State is true because if the starting cornerbacks are still in there for NC State, yeah. down 41-7 to seven right. with four minutes to go, they're never coming off the field. That's right. We posed the question earlier, Todd, and we'll talk about as we go along here the last 404. How good is NC State? They thought they were going to prove to the country today that they weren't just undefeated as the byproduct of a soft schedule. Look out, Wrencher. Well, I think last year they were on the same level of Clemson. What Clemson had last year, what North Carolina State had last year, when we did the game last year, th those were two very equally matched teams. They are not equal teams right now. No. I mean, North Carolina State lost a lot on defense. Dave Gorn has done his best to kind of repair that and replace. And offensively, if, if they just aren't able to run the football against the better teams with the same kind of consistency maybe as they did last year, and that's going to put more pressure on Ryan Finley. I still think they're a good team. They're just not at the same level of Clemson this year. There's B.T. Potter, the freshman, his first career field goal attempt. He's been the kickoff man, and he's brilliant at that. But he's going to get another chance. He missed the field goal wide right from 36 yards, but there was timeout. a whistle. Clemson, second charge timeout. The timeout will be 30 seconds. Potter has kicked off eight times today. They've all been touchbacks. He's kicked off 51 times this season. All but eight of them have been touchbacks. That is a weapon. They're going to give him the hook now. <laughs> I 
Well, guys, as good as the Clemson defensive line has played all day on defense, the thing that I think I love the most is that look at this field goal protection unit. Christian Wilkins, number 42, Dexter Lawrence, number 90. They'll probably be top round NFL draftees. They're on every special team. They're on punt. They're on field goal. They don't want to come off the field. Christian Wilkins actually said in a press conference earlier last week, I just wish they'd let me throw one. He's caught one. He's run one, but he hasn't thrown one yet. He, he wants that. Well, they're going to give Alex Spence, a graduate student, a chance to kick. He kicked a lot of last year after Hugel got hurt in practice after three games. He went nine for 14 last year. That one's a hook. And it's wide left. Everybody gets a participation trophy today. Tonight on ABC, we'll have the Big Ten battle. Ohio State and Purdue, 7.30 Eastern on ABC. And live on the ESPN app. You can watch anywhere. There's our weekly poll of ESPN experts for the night toward the Heisman. Dwayne Haskins, number two in this week's polling behind Tua Tungo-Vailoa, did nothing to hurt his cause today in their route of Tennessee. Talking about that Purdue Ohio State. Have you seen Rondale Moore play for Purdue? A freshman? Only on slot TV. Slot receiver. He's pretty special. I don't know if Purdue's got There's enough to, to, to play four quarters with Ohio State, but Jeff Brom, uh, he's got that team playing good right now. And he will call, he will pull out all the stops as a play caller. I know that. He will he will have all kinds of things up his sleeve. Ohio State offensively has been outstanding, but defensively, they've got some questions, particularly in the back end. And, you know, teams jockeying for position in that top four right now. Clemson was actually number two at the beginning of the year, won by 31 points against Georgia Southern and dropped behind Georgia. They flip flopped places, so now they're number three. Yeah. But with this impressive win over an undefeated team, if Ohio State squeaks by, they could flip positions. Well, I think they are the second best. I mean, if I was ranking them right now, I would have them number two That's and Ohio fair. State number three. Defense number 31. Mario Goodrich. An automatic first down at the spot of the foul. Matter of fact, I did rank them, and that's how I have them. I have Notre Dame number four, and then I think LSU and Michigan. Michigan with a really gutsy win on the road. They had the big weather delay at Michigan State. Gutted out a win, and of course, LSU with a trying to defend the home turf tonight against Mississippi State. So this is when the college football season gets really interesting because you've got elimination games every week. Devon Lewis, the reception from Ryan Finley. I'm sure Syracuse with that big win today is creeping back closer to your top four. Overtime win for the Orange. Double OT in the Dome. NC State's got to go up there to play the Orange next. That's their, their next opponent. Montre Rem has come into the game. Demonte Rem, transfer from UNC Pembroke. And he'll get a touch, but not a completion. Well, guys, what's really special about DeMonte Rem getting in right now, he is a UNC Pembroke where they do not have scholarships. So he paid for his own school by working for Bojangles. He lived at home. He would make the long drive. And he still lives at home until he got put on scholarship. He was taking care of his mom who had health problems. And he was working the fryer at Bojangles up until August. Frying chicken for Bojangles to pay for his school at wow. NC State. All that to get an opportunity like this. What for other guys might be garbage time. This guy's been dreaming about this for a long time, playing in front of 81,295 people on national television. Yeah. Makes all of that that he had to go through worth it. Xavier Kelly brought him down. Ryan Finley, a rough day by his very lofty standards. 20 for 33 for 155. That's the yardage. Just, just no big plays allowed by this Clemson defense. Demonte Rem. We're told that Finley has a brother. We mentioned he's from an athletic family. His mom, Robin, played tennis at St. Olaf in Minnesota, where his dad, Pat, played football and baseball. Sister Sydney's in Denver on the club volleyball team, but his brother Ben is a junior at Paradise Valley High School in Arizona. And Rudy Carpenter was a fine player at Arizona State, bounced around with some professional teams, including some NFL squads. 
now coaches and tutors quarterbacks. He says uh, Ben already has some uh, Power Five offers. So there'll be another Finley, the highest level of college football. Seems like Ryan's been here forever. He was a freshman at Boise State in 2013 and sat out that year, had shoulder issues and had surgery coming out of high school. So started 2013 with the red shirt season at Boise State. <laughs> Well, this is where his leadership and some of the other seniors on this football team, their leadership will be put to the test now. They had high hopes coming in here. We talked to a couple players and coaches last night. They really felt good about their opportunity, and they didn't get it done. They did not play well on either side of the ball other than stopping the run. They did that extremely well, but they've got to regroup. You know, they, they still have a good thing going. This puts them at 5-1. and one. And so they still have an opportunity to play for a lot for their season, but they've got to kind of regroup and get ready to go to Syracuse next week. And here's a guy, Finley, who has broken the records of people at yeah. NC State, like Philip Rivers and Russell Wilson, Mike Glennon. In recent years, Jacoby Brissett. It's a very impressive quarterback history over the last 15 or so years in Raleigh. Dating back to Chuck Amato, Tom O'Brien, now Dave Doran, or Dan, as some of us call him. Even <laughs> the play, his name. Illegal substitution on the return team. That penalty is a five yard penalty from the previous spot. We give the kicking team first down. And they could very well have five quarterbacks in the NFL next year when Finley heads into the draft. It's too bad that he had this kind of a day to day yeah. because he's better than what he showed he, no for a doubt lot of people is. around the country who had not watched him. And that highly touted receiving core, they were invisible today. Yeah, they were. Jacoby Myers had eight catches, but just for 61 yards, nobody else had more than two. And Kelvin Harmon, two for 13. I mean, that just is so below what his standard has been. None of the big plays down the field, the 50 50 balls. Now their passing game the last two ACC games against Virginia and Boston College had been really special. And today they ran into a different animal in the form of a Clemson Tiger defense. Well, at least some of the equipment people think this one is over. Yeah, we'll head start. Matthew McKay, the backup to Finley, going to get a little bit of time here in the final minute of the game. That's a good looking spiral to C.J. Riley. Well, Anthony Williams made the tackle. Yeah, that's what they've been doing all season. They throw those balls down there and those big bodied receivers get bodied up on a defensive back and they make those tough one on one catches. I think Riley was down earlier in the game wasn't he mm -hmm. after a special teams play heck of a catch. He actually went to the locker room earlier in the game yeah. with an apparent injury. That's the first career pass and first career completion for Matthew McKay, who hasn't seen much time behind Finley during these first five games of the season. Yeah, Eli Drinkwitz was joking with us yesterday. We said, what happens if McKay goes into the game? He says, well, you'll see a lot of quarterback runs. Said the kid prepares really hard. He works. He studies. Not sure how he's going to do if we have to throw the football, but he threw it really well that time. Well, as if... Mississippi State LSU then LeBron's home debut as a Laker as if that wasn't enough. There's still more tonight on ESPN. It's topped off with SportsCenter with Scott Van Pelt after the buzzer of Rockets and Lakers. He'll have a reaction from that game. Kirk Herbstreit because he hasn't had enough hours on the air today will join the show to break down the day in college football. And then we'll have a recap of how the National League pennant was won. Will it be the Brewers or the Dodgers for the right to lose to the Red Sox in the World Series? Did I say that out loud? My <laughs> Sorry. Sports <laughs> Center with SVP after the NBA at 1 a.m. Eastern on ESPN. Should be a terrific game tonight and a great World Series, regardless of yeah. uh, which one of those teams wins the National League tonight. Tamate Rem behind Matthew McKay. Neither of them probably expected to be playing here tonight. And McKay. Ripped down by Xavier Thomas. What a play by Thomas. <laughs> I mean, he is on the play side. 
Watch him. He's right here. He's going to shed the block and watch how quickly he disengages and chases down the quarterback. I mean, that's an explosive play by a backup defensive end who they think is going to be outstanding. And NC State elected not to try to snap it again.